Hello and welcome to the channel, the small channel that it is. Uh, today I want to talk about my wife's 2003 GMC Yukon SLT. Not the XLT, SLT. It's the short one like a Tahoe. Um, SLT basically means it's got a lot of the creature comforts, memory seats, heated leather, yada yada, but uh, it's a step down from the Denali. Uh, doesn't have sunroof or, uh, or all the fancy chrome. It does have chrome wheels, but not the, the, the grill and the, uh, the different bumper they put on the front with the fancier fog lights and all that. Anyway, what do I want to talk about? Well, I want to talk about MPGs. What else do I talk about? Uh, this thing for a 2003 uh, that we bought a year ago with 163,000 miles or buck 61, I think it was. We've had it for a year. And uh, first things right off the bat that I did was I replaced all four shocks with... Uh, Bilstein shocks and uh, replaced the tires all the way around uh, to my knowledge that's really all I remember doing to this it's all it really needed uh, and with a vehicle that right now let's take a peek it's got 177,847 miles okay so it's been getting driven and you know we bought it used and and we keep using it. For a vehicle with this many miles, the uh, fuel economy is pretty good too. Okay, here it is. Sorry, the phone is sideways. Hopefully you can see that. 18.7, it was at 18.8, but uh, you know how it is. Get off the highway or get to an area where it's a, Every corner has a traffic light you got to stop at. It's a pain in the ass. That stuff kills MPGs more than anything else. But um, here's the, the down low on this thing. We bought it a year ago. We did a couple of things to it and just drove it. That's it. That's all we've had to do. It's been reliable. It, uh, it, what else can I say? It's been reliable. It fits everybody comfortably. Uh, this thing does have a third row seat, which is currently not in here uh, We've had to take them out to have cargo space uh, For a few things that we had to do and since then we just haven't put them back in uh, Either way if we did need the third row in a matter of a few minutes I'd have them back in the vehicle uh, It's got the 5.3 liter v8 if I'm not mistaken, it's rated at a, uh, 285 horsepower and about 280 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, could be slightly off on those numbers. Uh, I don't remember exactly what they are. It's been a long time since I've looked. It's not the first full-size V8 4x4 that we've bought from GM. We've had a 2002 Avalanche. Uh, we also had a 2002 uh, Suburban after the avalanche and now we have this Yukon um, and we love them they're for what they are they're economical they they drink less fuel than the uh, competition and as far as reliability goes it's pretty much through the roof uh, the uh, the avalanche we typically only had to go to the shop once per year with that thing because of something stupid letting go. When you're buying stuff used and it's got 150,000 miles or more, you're gonna, you gotta expect something to let go. But some vehicles have something letting go every month. At least with these vehicles, 2002 and 2003 GM full-size V8 4x4s, that hasn't been the case. We haven't had to go to a shop every month because of something. It's once a year because of something stupid either a water pump, which they're known for, or the alternator. As a matter of fact, that's another thing we did on this vehicle was the alternator. 
back when we got it. So it's got the four shocks, tires, and an alternator. And uh, recently I did replace the battery too. Um, that's how it is with used vehicles. And I, I can't complain. I really can't. For the age of the vehicle that it is, with the mileage that it's got, just having to do a handful of stupid things once a year that they don't even reach four or four or five hundred bucks. It, it's always something small. Uh, one, two hundred, sometimes three hundred. That's all it's really been. So I'm happy. And most people who have had these things I'm sure I've also been happy, except for those of you that might have dealt with uh, something of a bigger issue. People say that these things are common for bad transmission. I personally have never experienced any problems with the transmission, and I tow with these vehicles. And I don't put it in tow mode like people tell me I should. I'm just cautious, and I gradually pick up speed instead of... You know, driving like a dumbass who doesn't realize that there's three to five thousand pounds hooked up to the back of the thing and accelerate as if I'm just driving the kids to school. No, you know, you gotta be gentle, you know, when you're towing. And I've not had any transmission issues. They also say water pumps are a common problem with these vehicles. Uh, the avalanche we had did need a water pump when we uh, when we got it, uh, but it was leaking slow, so we didn't even have to take care of it right away. A year after owning that vehicle was when we finally did it, just because. I was tired of having to always check what the level of the coolant was so that it wouldn't be deprived of coolant and overheat. And for the simple peace of mind and not having to check all the time, I simply had it changed, the, the water pump that is, and, um, and that was that. Uh, the Suburban dealt with a head gasket uh, to the intake. Uh, the intake uh, gasket uh, was leaking on uh, one of the corners, which... Not a big deal once the engine is warmed up, but while the engine is cold, it will uh, sputter a little bit, almost like it's misfiring, like uh, like the timing could be off, or you got a bad spark plug. It, it could seem that way, but it wasn't, because once the engine is warm, it smooths out and acts like it's got no issue. Um, that is the only major thing that we dealt with on that Suburban. But we never even bothered fixing it. It was a vehicle we bought with 153,000 miles, and it was only 1,800 bucks. And we used it for two years, and it just kept going. You know, we put new tires on it at one point, and I did cut out the muffler uh, and put a Flowmaster 44 into it at one point. But that was by choice. That wasn't because I had to just wanted some rumble so I went ahead and did that and that's all I really did to that Suburban you know the the Avalanche uh, we had that thing for three and a half years and it was a similar scenario with that yeah the biggest thing that I dealt with on that was the water pump simple as that yeah and this vehicle now we've had it for a year and again it's been something minor and, and that was back when we first got it, and we knew it was going to need those things right off the bat. Um, part of the reason why we pay cheap for these vehicles is because they do currently need something, and uh, we're willing to do what that is because they're typically so reliable that it doesn't bother us to buy something like this with anywhere from a buck fifty to a buck eighty or a buck ninety, as long as it's. A reasonable price we don't mind fixing that thing that they say needs to be fixed now that hit that gasket for the uh, the intake those are common but once again the suburban was the only one we had to change that on the the avalanche never dealt with it and this doesn't have any issue with that no no sputtering when it's cold or anything like that um, the avalanche 
during the last six months that we had it, we had that for three and a half years. It had 225,000 miles when it it was ticking enough from the exhaust manifold leaking that it would have it would have needed to be done to pass inspection here in Mass. It would have needed to be done, but we sold it instead because the uh, the frame did get crusty over the uh, the back axle. That's another thing to watch out on these vehicles. But when you're checking one of these things out, any GM, full size, 4x4, or even if it's not a four-wheel drive, they're pretty much all on the same chassis. They pretty much all have the same engines. Um, there is the 4.8, which is basically the same block, but it's a different uh, material. I don't know if it's cast iron or... Or something versus uh, an aluminum block or steel block or whatever it is. I, I can't remember. But it's technically the same block, just different material. A heavier material. Uh, I personally prefer the 5.3. That's the one that, I, that I've had the most. Uh, I did also have a 2003 Chevy Express cargo van that had the... Uh, it had was the 4.8 uh, engine, the 4.8 V8 which drank a bit more gas some would say it's because it's uh sm smaller it's a 4.8 instead of a 5.3 but it's the same block so how how that comes out to a smaller number i have no idea all i know is that it drank more gas and i rounded it off to it being because it's a heavier engine now considering that it was a heavier engine some of the weight was compensated by the fact that the van was only back wheel drive and the rest of these GM vehicles that we've been using were 4x4s. So it lost weight not being a 4x4 but gained weight being a 4x8. I don't know. I'm just guessing here. Bottom of the line at the end of the day, that van did drink more gas than these four wheel drive full size 4x4s. The, yeah, four wheel drive 4x4s. Way to go, Claudio. Say the same thing twice. Anyway, they're good vehicles. When you're in the market for one, take a quick peek at the frame. That's the first thing you should do. And if the frame looks decent, some surface rust, but no no rot, no holes. You know what I mean? If it's got surface rust, that's easy to clean and throw some, uh, some good uh, Rust-Oleum uh, rust-preventing paint on there it'll uh it'll do the trick and it'll get you by uh for a while that's for sure other than that make sure that when you're starting the engine when you're buying one of these things cold uh, cold when you're buying one of these things you're starting the engine cold uh you don't want someone to have the engine already warmed up for you so that you don't realize that it could be you know leaking from the uh intake gasket which is, you know, it's not that hard a job to, f to fix, but it's a lot of pieces to move out of the way. It can become tedious if you don't have the patience uh, for that kind of thing. Probably just better off having a mechanic do it. Overall, it's worth doing because these engines are pretty bulletproof aside from the, the stupid water pump. Okay, it, everything with age wears out. But you, you stay on top of the couple of things that you know they're known for. You can get a ton of miles out of these things. I've seen them with five, six hundred thousand miles. And people asking ridiculous money for them. Uh, just because they're proven to, uh, to last. And to really pack on the mileage. So, you know, you want to look out for that. Uh, and... Um, be cautious of someone wanting to take you for a test drive. If you're buying the vehicle, you need to be the one behind the wheel. I had this one uh, dealership selling a Suburban that we were interested in before we bought this Yukon. And um, the dealer insisted to be the one to drive it off the lot and down the street he would, you know, swap seats with me or my wife. And the, uh, <laughs> he must have thought he was talking to somebody who's not, uh, any, in, in any way knowledgeable about vehicles. 
he was attempting to warm up the vehicle so that we wouldn't notice the transmission was shifting hard because he was taking off real slow like he was pulling onto main roads and he wasn't getting up to speed as fast as he should have been in cars getting on our ass and you know he was claiming that uh he just didn't he didn't like driving fast but i'm not that person if i'm getting onto a main road that's got a 45 50 mile an hour uh mileage thing that you know the speed is up there I don't want to freaking pull out on there and gradually get to my speed. No, I want to get there efficiently. I'm not saying I want to floor it, but I want to efficiently get there. So I'm not having people getting on my ass or possibly even rearranging me. No, thanks. So he attempted to warm up the transmission. So hoping that it wouldn't shift hard. When I took over the uh, steering wheel after he went down several blocks, I went for the the accelerator in a normal way not grandma style but not uh, speedy gonzalez style either and he's like hey whoa whoa no, don't be speeding with me in the vehicle it's you don't drive it like it's yours until you've bought it no I, well first of all you're you know babying the hell out of it because you didn't want me to notice that it's shifting hard but i noticed and the first thing I wanted to do when I got behind the wheel was to verify that I noticed that from the back seat, even though he was babying it. Uh, and we got back to the lot and checked out the uh, fluid for the uh, transmission. And he had definitely uh, had already messed with it because, yes, the fluid was clean, but it was also over full. He said he was going to drain some out and that was most likely what was causing it. But I've accidentally overfilled transmissions on these full size GM vehicles and it did not make the transmission shift hard. OK. So he tried to get me on that one and it didn't work and I moved on. So be aware. Don't let someone take you on the test drive. You take them on the test drive. If you're going to buy it, you're going to buy it to drive it the way you drive. You, you're not going to drive it the way they drive. Everybody has a different driving style. So buy it and test it. You know, Be hard on the vehicle if, if need be. Even if that's not how you drive on a normal basis. If you're hard on a vehicle, it's going to show you its ugly face if it has a problem. In most cases. So be cautious of that. Start the engine yourself. Make sure it's cold when you start it to see if it's if the engine is uh, acting like it's misfiring. That could be that gasket I'm telling you about. Be the one behind the wheel when you get on the road. Make sure it's not shifting hard when it's cold. Don't let them be the ones telling you how you're going to drive the vehicle. If they want your business, you're going to test the vehicle and make sure that there's no problem there that you're buying into. Okay? Uh... When you pop the hood to make sure that everything looks the way it should, look down to the water pump pulley and see if any of those bolts around that pulley have any kind of um, soapy looking streams coming down from the bolts. That is a sign that coolant has been dripping from there and uh, coolant tends to look white-ish, almost like a soap scum kind of stream. Uh, look out for that. Um, you can also listen out for a, a slight tick coming from the exhaust manifolds because not just GM, but all V8 uh, 4x4s from all the manufacturers, they all do it. At some point, they all do it. It's not just GM. I see Ford's doing them. I see Dodge's doing them. And the Chevys and Nissans and Toyotas, they all do it at some point. Okay? So be aware of that. Uh, other than those things that I've mentioned to, to look out for, these are great vehicles. They are reliable. You do the few little things to them that they need along the way, and they will take you anywhere. Uh, just be aware. And, and not only that, not only are they that dependable to trust them that much they're great for family hauling and as far as the gms go they're pretty good on the mpgs um uh, 
which is more than I can say for the other American-made uh, competitors. Um, I'm not sure what else I could mention about on this, uh, so I'm just going to leave it there. I hope this video was useful to you. Uh, if so, leave a thumbs up. Um, I have been posting videos more often re uh, lately, so if you want to follow, that would be great. Um, you don't necessarily have to hit the bell button, as everybody says. Hit that bell button, get notifications when we post videos. Seriously, are you that desperate? No, I'm, I'm making videos to help people out. Give people a piece of knowledge that maybe they don't have on their own. And if they do, then maybe my video is just verifying stuff that they already know for another person that they can say, uh, you know, I used to know five or six people, but now there's this other guy that's saying the same thing. You know, just verifying information that you might already know or new information you didn't already know. I'm, I'm not here to get the views. Um, I doubt this channel will ever get to the point where it'll make me any kind of income because of the amount of followers I have. And even if I did get enough followers for that kind of thing, I'm not going to be telling people to go click that damn bell. That's stupid. I hate hearing people saying that. Even the channels that I go to all the time because I like their content. When it comes to that piece, the second they start talking about bells, okay, I'm out. I end the video and I move on to the next one. Because I don't... I don't like the thought of being busy with something, taking care of life, and then suddenly the phone is going bling bling, uh, telling you a notification. Oh, so and so just posted a new video. Okay, do I have to know that now? No, I'm busy. You know, let me do what I gotta do. Uh, if I like that person's content, I'll go searching for any new content every now and then. I don't want to be bothered when I'm in the middle of work or in the middle of messing with something at the house or helping a friend with something or hanging out with some friends or family. I don't want that bother. I don't want the damn thing going off all the time. Ugh. It'll lose my mind. Pull my hair out. Hell no. But like I was saying before I went into this crazy rant, you like the, 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 the content, uh, a like is appreciated. Follow if you'd like to. Uh, and other than that, take care of yourself.